this tank, believe it or not, has not had a water change since it's been set up. Oh, wow. How come? Uh, What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. We're still here in Louisiana, and we're coming to see the 65-gallon tank. Chris invited us over. Looks fantastic. It's been running for about a year. Look at the chicken over there running in there. <laughs> At first I thought it was too young, the tank, to come see it, but after seeing pictures, it looks phenomenal. I can't believe how good of a job it's doing. So follow me inside, let's go see him. Come on. Chris? Thank you hey. for having us over, buddy. We appreciate no it. No problem, man. man. Welcome to Louisiana. Beautiful tank, man. So, Thanks. how big is this thing? This right here is the Pro Store Pro Clear. This is the 90 series, so it's a 65-gallon uh, with a 35-gallon or a 30-gallon song. And how long has this tank been running? This one right here has only been running right at 11 months. Right at 11 months. So, when you first showed me the tank, I thought it wasn't grown enough. And that's the case, you told me 11 months, but when I saw the pictures closely, I see how good of a job you're doing. So I said, we have to make it here and just show this thing off for everyone. <laughs> it looks amazing, man. One of the first things that I noticed is this rock flower anemones that you have. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, but I love it how some are in the bottom and some actually made them into the rocks. There, there's actually several more. They spawned about two months ago, so there's like 15 babies hiding around in there. So you get like little tiny babies that pop around? There's some, they're like the size of the uh, little starfish. Wow, man, it looks phenomenal. And this chalice right here, we call it the... Um, That's the Stellaria. Word. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> me and Joe Caparata bought that chalice together about 10 years ago. It's gorgeous, actually it gets like little orange, it, it changes colors when it grows bigger. The, the, Colony I got it from had a lot of orange and red tones in the center, but he was growing it in a shallow lagoon, so it's probably catching a little bit more pour than what I'm putting on it. And then I see you got the grafted setosa back there. Yes, sir. What are these, Sunny D's down here? Yeah. Man, you're doing really good with your zoanthus. There's actually a, a, the clowns are actually staying in there. No, they are? <laughs> yeah, that's where they host. When it started out, I was head over heel in the zoas because it was just so easy to get so much color so quick. You know what, so much color so quick, but they can be finicky too. Zoanthus is, is a coral that grows very well when it wants to grow well, but when it's not happy with the nutrients, it seems like they can just shrivel down. Or as a, as a beginner down. though, the, the nutrient levels always tend to be a little higher than what you experienced guys are with, so they took off like wildfires whenever I first got in the hobby. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, you're doing a great job with them, you know? Thank you. And then you got your little torches, you got your Euphilia Island right here. Yeah. What is that back there? Is that a Galaxia? That is Sonic the Hedgehog Galaxia. She's stuck in the back because she does not play nice with nobody. Nobody. You know, there's a reason why they call them Galaxia. Yes. <laughs> Galaxia <laughs> Coral. Yeah. They can reach as far as they want to reach, right? She's, she's killed several. Uh, I got. 10 brand new SPS frags, and I stuck them on a rack near her, and I woke up in the morning, and seven of them were dead. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> man. Let, let's learn quick, right? Yeah. What are these, the scrambled eggs? That's the scrambled eggs. And you got the WWC old school graphic cap. Yep, yeah, I got some here, and got some up here, and there's a faded piece that had fell in the back the other day. So this is what I tell a lot of people. Every time I go to different places, I see the reefers passing the same corals around. You guys all have the original graphic cap. You guys need to get the jawbreaker, which is yellow or red. So one thing worth mentioning, you say the tank has been running only for 11 months. Yes, sir. Okay, and you're having a lot of encroachment on some of the aquaporas. I see new growth tips on some of the blue one right here, the green one back there. How did you do it so fast? Was this rock here or was it dry rock? This rock right here was actually dry rock, and I cycled it with a three-year-old rock that I had, and then placed it in the tank and started adding the coral. This one right here broke out in severe bubble algae. Yeah? Yeah, so I have five emerald crabs that actually cleaned it up in a, the last six months. The tank's looking really good, especially for 11 months. I cannot, I cannot believe it how good you're doing with them, you know? Can you tell me what's the story with the sparrow clowns here? 
the fish in this tank, I tried to get the kids hooked, so I let my little boy pick the fish. Okay. So he, he wanted a black and white Nemo, and then he had to have the regular Nemo, so that's how we got that. And then, of course, in Louisiana, we love LSU, so we had to get the Royal Grandma. Okay. And then I have a one-spot fox face and a Tomini Tane, the spotted mandarin. Okay, I didn't see him. And other than that, we have just the two uh, shrimp. There's a red emerald in here. Yeah, and I see the porcelain crab right there. There's a porcelain crab. There's a blue porcelain and a red porcelain crab on this rock hiding right now. They only come out at night. So what's your favorite coral in this tank? In this tank, my favorite would have to be the Rapunzel torch. And I love the yellow submarine fire. I love it too. He's so happy, that thing. And believe it or not, something silly like the grafted cap right above it, the way you got that specific piece looking, I'm digging it. Because it's just grafted just the right way. Yeah. It's like it's flawless. I, I've learned that the yellow submarine and the echinata in the back are not playmates. Okay, so <laughs> the thing is the echinata will be super aggressive, but it won't reach. However, the yellow submarine will reach. The conch helped it reach. <laughs> oh, it did. Oh, it pushed it over. <laughs> Let me ask you a little bit about your, your uh, chemistry. Your, your main is, what does it include? Like, do you do water changes? This tank, believe it or not, has not had a water change since it's been set up. Oh, wow, how come? Uh, just easier that way. Uh, with the previous tanks that I had, I eventually got to dosing Aquaforest Comp 1, 2, 3, and my nutrient levels always have been low. So I just stayed with no water change and it's been maintaining and it's, it's basically just a bacteria driven system. So uh, you're using bacteria in the system? Yeah. What kind? I use uh, Dr. Tim's Eco Balance okay. and I use the Live Rock Enhance and Reef Enhance. Wow. And uh, Dr. Tim's, I'll go about a week of dosing like five to 10 milliliters a night. I'll cut that out and then once a month I hit it with a dose of Live Rock and Reef Enhance. Well, whatever you're doing is working. Kudos to you. It's one of the best looking tanks that I've seen, especially for not doing water changes. And as far as dosing, it's running on uh, Alpha Reef. Alpha Reef. Yeah. <laughs> so Tropic Marin, Alpha Reef, which is basically calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. Yeah. And what do you feed the tank? The tank, everything is fed on uh, Rod's original blend. Okay, that's basically, you don't feed nothing else. No, every, every once in a blue moon, I'll use a Coral Feast or Quantum's Coral Cane just to give it the, the coral a little something extra, but for the most part, it's grown on, on rods. Uh, That's fantastic, man. I, I love to hear different things. Usually when I go to uh, different, um, different parts of the country, most people reef the same, and I just went to one of your bodies early, and this is different, and I like this. It's completely, you're not doing water changes. You're only feeding one type of frozen food. Yeah. which is completely different to what I'm used to. Do you feed any phytoplanktons, any amino acids, anything like uh, that? We do. I use uh, the Aquaforest Phyto Mix. Okay. And I actually use Aquaforest, uh, their ABEV. What is that? The Build Energy Vitality and Aminos. Can we see some of your filtration? Sure. Oh, wow. Look how clean this is. I love it, man. Hey, it's filter floss, and bio balls, man. The, the whole back is full of bio balls, too. How often you clean the filter floss? The filter floss, every Sunday, I, I change the filter floss and clean the skimmer. Okay, and what do we have here, auto top of water? That's the auto top off, and that is the uh, alpha the reef. The bacteria? The alpha reef. The alpha reef. And how do you dose the bacteria? I am old school, man. It's okay. all manual. Okay, yeah. cool. So you basically use dosing the Alpha Reef, is this Coral View doser right here, this Kamori yep. doser? Yep, the this F1. Is one doser. And I think it's at 15 milliliters a day. Okay. And then you got the little, what is it called? That's the Aqua Duetto. Uh, okay. Auto top off? Auto top off. And for protein skimmer, what do you have in there? That is a Reef Octopus Classic 110. Okay, obviously you guys have Coral View here in town, so all of you guys have Reef Octopus. I mean, I can say good enough things about Reef Octopus Protein Skimmers, guys. You guys keep hearing me say some of the same things in the videos. I've been using Reef Octopus Protein Skimmers for close to 20 years. And 20 years ago, people used to call you cheap if you use one of them. And today, I think they produce one of the best protein skimmers in the market that they are, period. And, and like you said, being local, it's, it's not hard to source. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if any parts or anything, you can just get them to you a lot quicker, right? You have a heater? Yep. Any UV sterilizer or anything like it? Nope. No? Nope. So you um, got the auto top off, 
You got the all in one reef, filter stocks, a bunch of uh, viables from media, and then you say you manually dose on the bacteria. Yes. Okay, let's talk about your flow. What do you have for flow? I have a Nero 3. Okay. And then I have the Jabao, I think it is the 90 gyro. So it seems like it's plenty of flow. I mean, everything's just moving just right. So are you planning to add more SPS toward this top? I think we're gonna let it simmer right here. Just uh, let them it's grow a it's got bit, a good right? bit. I think I'm gonna just go ahead and let her fill out. Lights. What do you have here? Aqua illumination? Aqua illumination. These are the 64 HDs. 64 HDs. And how long have you had them? They've been on the tank. They actually came with the other tank we're gonna show later. It had three H, uh, 64s on it and one without. So these graduated over here and they got to upgrade on the, on the other tank. Gotcha. Is, isn't it beautiful, the color they produce though? I love the raw blues. Uh, I just don't find many other lights can reach it. I got in the hobby on the aqua illuminations and it's just, it struck a chord and that's what I rolled with. Cool. So I got another question for you. How long you been in this hobby? Been in the hobby three years. Three years. And this tank has only been running 11 months. Yes. So, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag. This is not his only tank. Do you guys wanna stay tuned and watch the other one? I'll let you know more. <laughs> phenomenal thank you for inviting us over thank you guys thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode because we're going to show you the next tank on the meantime don't forget to subscribe to our channel give us a like post some comments below we'll see you in the next episode